Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Thing YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving leak code problem 1530, number of good leaf nodes pairs. Let's read the question prompt. You are given the root of a binary tree and an integer distance. A pair of two different leaf nodes of a binary tree is said to be good if the length of the shortest path between them is less than or equal to distance. Return the number of good leaf node pairs in the tree. So, for example, if we're given this tree 1, 2, 3, 4, what is the number of good leaf pairs given that the distance we can work with is 3? Well, we see that the two leaves are going to be 4 and 3. So what's the distance between them? Well, to get to 2 is a distance of 1. To get to this 1 is a distance of 2 now. And to get to 3 is a total distance of 3, which is less than or equal to the distance we have to work with, Therefore, we have one good leaf pair, which is our answer. Okay, but what about a more complex example? What about this tree, where again we have the distance of 3, but this is our tree structure now. So we can see that the leaves are 4, 5, 6, and 7, but what is the number of good leaf node pairs? Well, what's the distance from 4 to the other leaves? So to get to 4, to get to 5 is going to be a hop of 1, and then 2. So that's less than our distance of 3, so that means that we have one good leaf pair so far, right? So this one, so this is a good leaf pair. Um, what about the distance from 4 to 6? So it's the distance of 1 to here, 2 to there, 3 to here, 4 to the 6. So that means that this pair, 4 and 6 are not good leaf pairs because the distance between them is 4, and that's obviously more than our distance 3. What about 4 and 7? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4 distance again, so that doesn't work. And we know that 5 and 6 is going to be the same story. 1, 2, 3, 4, so that doesn't work. 1, 2, 3, 4 for the 7, that doesn't work. And obviously, we don't want to double count this one. 4 and 5 is the same as 5 and 4, so we don't do that. So we've already tried 4 to 6, 4 to 5, or 5 to 6. Um, but what we haven't tried is actually 6 to 7, so 1, 2. So we can see that that is a distance of 2, which is less than or equal to our distance 3. So that means that these are also a good leaf pair. So in this case, we should return 2 for our answer. So that's how you go through the example. But how do we actually solve this question? Let's think about it. So we read the question prompt and we went over the examples. But how are you actually going to put this problem into code and solve it using some sort of algorithm? Well, we know that we want to find all the possible good leaf pairs in our tree, which means that we need to know, um, you know, at any point, what is the distance um, from two leaves to each other. Now, what we could do is, you know, we could find all the leaves and then do like a breadth first search to all the other um, uh, leaves in the tree. But this would require us, first of all, having to build the tree as a graph, and then we would have to BFS from each of the leaves to all the other possible leaves, and that would be a very complex solution. Uh, what if we, you know, we can use the, the distance from the leaves at any point to figure out whether or not we have um, you know, any good leaf pairs? So what I mean by this is, you know, let's traverse this tree and when we hit a leaf, let's return to its parent the distance um, you know, that it is from a leaf. So for example, if we get to this 4, obviously this is a leaf. So we should just return 1 to its parent. Because what that means is that 2 is distance 1 from a leaf. And then we do the same for the 5. So we would return a 1. And notice that we're going to return lists here. Because when you're at a leaf, okay, you just return one value, but now two, uh, when it passes up to its parent, will have you know multiple distances, right? It has to account for the fact that it can come from the left or it can come from the right. <clears throat> and essentially, what we want to do is you know at every node, we're going to receive the distance from the left and we're going to distribute the distance from the right. And what we want to do is for every possible combination in the left and the right. We're going to add them together, and if that sum is less than uh, or equal to basically the distance that we're given, then we know it's a good leaf pair, and we can continue. Then what we can do is we can add one to each distance and then pass it up to the parent. So let's kind of work through this and see what I mean. 
So, you know, we'll traverse this tree, we'll go to the leaves, and now that we're at a leaf, what we're gonna do is we're gonna return one to the parent, and we're gonna return that as a list, which represents the, you know, distance um, to, to all the leaves from this uh, left subtree. And then we're gonna do the same for the right subtree. So now two is gonna receive one from its uh, list containing the element one, and a list containing the element one from its left and its right subtree. Now what we need to do is for every combination of all the values in this list and all the values in this list, if the sum of the values is less than or equal to our distance, then we have a good leaf pair. Luckily here it's quite simple because there's only one node in each one. So basically we just have to check does one plus one, is it less than, you know, less than or equal to three? Yes, it is. So that means that this, um, we have found a good leaf pair. So then what we want to do is, you know, increment our count. So that means that we will have found one pair. And the two, what it's going to do is it's going to return for every, you know, left, uh, every item in the, in the list that we received from the left side. So remember, it was like a one here. And then every element in the right side, what we're going to do is we're going to add one element to each of those and then return one big list combining both of them. So this is going to be one plus one, so two, and then we're going to combine it with everything added one in this list, so two. And we're going to do the same thing for this side. So this would return a one here, and this would return a one here. And we're going to check, okay, does you know every element in this list added to every element in this list, is there any thing where the sum is less than or equal to distance? Yes. So obviously one plus one is two, which is less than three. So that means that we have a good leaf pair and we can increment our count of the good leaf pairs. And then we're gonna go up to the parent and we're gonna return you know, two and two because again, we are you know, returning one uh, plus one to every element in here, plus one to every element in here, and then combining the two lists. So now this one is gonna receive from its left side two, two, and then it's gonna receive two, two from the other side. And what we need to do is we need to, for every element in here, we need to add it to every element in here and check whether that, that distance uh, is less than, you know, three here. So, you know, two is gonna get added to this first two. So obviously two plus two, that's gonna be four, that doesn't work. Okay, now two plus the second two, two plus two, again, equals to four, doesn't work. Then this two is gonna try for every element. So two plus two, Again, four, you can see where this is going, doesn't work. And then this plus the last two, two plus two equals to four, and it doesn't work. And then from this root, you know, we would combine both of these lists together, and then we would pass up, you know, if we were continuing to go, obviously this is the root, so we stop here, but this would, you know, we would add one to every element and then basically uh, pass the concatenation of both of these lists. So what we would return if there was a next level would be three, 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 three. And then we would continue this process up and up and up. So as you can see, this was a post order traversal through the tree because we processed the left children first before processing the, I guess, the current node that we're at. So that's the approach that we want to take for this problem. It's going to be a variation of a post order traversal. Uh, and we do have to do that, you know, checking where we want to make sure that, you know, all the elements in the left list plus uh, all the elements in the right list um equal to you know less than or equal to distance and if they do we can increment our good leaf count uh if not then we just we don't increment anything and then we just keep passing up to the tree so that's the approach we want to do it may be a little bit confusing but let's go into the let's code. write the code the first thing that we want to do is make sure that we actually have a valid root because if we don't then there's nothing that we can even do so let's make sure that we have that and if we don't let's return zero so we're going to say if not root we can simply return zero. Otherwise, we need a variable to track our number of good pairs. So let's write that. So we'll say self.goodPairs is gonna equal to zero. And now remember that we need to do the post order traversal to actually figure out the number of good leaf pairs. So let's call that on the root. We're gonna say self.postOrder and we'll define it in a second. We'll pass the root and we'll pass the distance that we're allowed to work with. The last thing that we need to do is simply return the number of good pairs. Okay, simple enough, but now we need to do the meat of this problem, which is the actual post order logic. So let's define that function. We'll say def post order, it's gonna take self a node and it's gonna take the distance, right? 
So what happens when we get to a node like this too and we try to go into its left subtree, but obviously it doesn't exist. In this case, you know, we have a null node. Um, so all we want to do there is return an empty list. So we're going to say if not, uh, if not node, we want to return an empty list because there's no distances to a leaf for us to process. Remember that this function is going to be returning a list of all the distances to a leaf um, from a given node. So what we want to do now is check whether or not the node we're at is actually a leaf. In this case, obviously the distance is going to be one uh, because when we get to the parent, you know, for example, is two, if we called into its right subtree, this four should return a one because the distance from two to, you know, the leaf is going to be one. So that's how we get one. So we're going to say if not node.left and not node.right, which is essentially what a leaf is, right? It doesn't have any left or right children, but it, it itself is defined. So we can simply return one or a list with the length one in it. Now what we want to do is we want to get the left leaf distances. Um, and we're going to say left leaf dists is going to be equal to self.dfs. And we're going to go into the left subtree and we're going to pass the distance. And we're going to say right leaf dists is going to be self.dfs. Oh, sorry, this should be uh, post order. Post order. And we're going to say node.right and dis distance. And now what we're going to do is we need to try every single possible combination in L leaf distances. Uh, and then try it with every possible combination of our leaf distances. So basically we're just doing every single combination here. So we're going to say for left distance in L leaf uh, dists, we're going to say if the current distance is actually too big, uh, so if it's greater than or equal to distance, then we know that adding, no matter what we add from the right, it's not gonna matter because we're not gonna be able to find a valid distance because it's already too big. So we're simply gonna say continue. We don't wanna process this because we'd just be wasting our time and iterating over the entirety of the right leaf dists um, list for no reason. So now we wanna go over all the right distances. So we're gonna say for our dist in our leaf distances, we're going to say again, we want to check if that R distance is actually big, too big, then we can just continue. We don't care. Um, uh, so we're going to say if actually we, we actually don't need that. Um, so we're going to say if so self good pairs, so we're going to append to the good pairs one if the left distance plus the right distance is less than or equal to you know, distance, which is what a good leaf pair is, right? The shortest path between them is less than or equal to distance. Otherwise, we're not gonna add anything to it. So we'll just add zero in the case that that doesn't work. And this will basically give us all of the, you know, good leaf pairs up until that point. Now what we wanna do is we want to pass to the next level, um, you know, the length of each of these you know left distances and right distances but we want to add one to them because obviously we're going one level higher up in the tree so we should be adding one to them so we're simply going to return one plus distance for distance in l leaf dists plus r leaf dists and this part right here basically we're just adding two lists together um, and then iterating over each of the distances in the combined list between them so that's what we want to do. Let's submit this, make sure that um, we didn't make any bugs anywhere and we can fix it if we did. And we can see that it works. Okay, cool. What is going to be the runtime complexity and the space complexity for this algorithm? Well, we can see that, you know, we're doing a post order traversal, but inside of this post order traversal, we're doing this complicated procedure where essentially we have to, um, you know, go over the entirety of like the left leaf distances and the right distances, and then try to, you know, make every single possible combination. So in the worst case, you know, this is going to have the entirety of the left tree here when we're at this one from its left side. And on the right side, it's going to have the entirety of the right tree. And we're gonna have to try every single possible combination. Um, 
on both sides. So what that means is that, you know, it's going to be big O of n over 2, because that's going to be half the elements on this side times, you know, half the elements on the other side. So this solution, I believe, is going to be big O of n squared because of this annoying pit where we have to actually just compare, you know, all the left distances and then iterate over the right distances. So because we have this nested for loop, it's going to be big O of n squared. Space complexity wise, I believe it's going to be just big O of n because the left leaf distances, um, you know, in the worst case, um, it should always just be, you know, whatever the number of leaves is, which is going to be bounded by, you know, the size of the tree. Uh, so I believe it's going to be big O of n on the space, although I'm not 100% certain because we are, you know, doing, um, you know, the post order traversal and then within that we have to carry it forward. It could potentially also be big O of n squared. I'm a little bit unsure on this one. I know how to do the algorithm, the actual time and space complexity does escape me. Unfortunately, there's no formal solution for this one, so I can't verify it. Perhaps someone in the comments below can uh, comment whether or not this is the actual um, time and space complexity here, but I believe it should be uh, big O of n squared for the time, and then space is either gonna be um, big O of n or big O of n squared. I'm not 100% sure on that one, I apologize. But this is the solution that you wanna go with to solve this problem. It's just a simple post order traversal and you just need to um, basically try out all the possible combinations of the left distances and the right distances to see if their sum is uh, less than or equal to kind of the global distance that we're told to work with. Anyway, that's gonna be how you solve this problem. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If there's any videos that you'd like me to solve, please let me know in the comment section below. I'd be happy to make the videos for you guys. You just have to tell me the problem number uh, or the topic you'd like me to cover and I'd be happy to make the videos for you guys. Otherwise, in the meantime, happy coding. Bye.